Today we're taking a look at these NHL matches, which are happening on Friday, October 21st, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, by becoming a member of the High Stakes Patreon, you will have access to our best team picks, total picks, parlay picks and much more. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting predictions that ends up costing you a lot of time and money. Join the High Stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Tampa Bay Lightning vs Florida Panthers. The Lightning are off to a slow start with their offense scoring only 10 goals in their first four games. While Steven Stamkos, Nikita Kucherov and Braden Point have combined for 7 goals and 7 assists to lead the top two lines, the rest of the offense has struggled. The hope is that defensemen Viktor Hedman and Mikhail Sergachev can start to find the back of the net as they have contributed five assists but have yet to score a goal this season. The Panthers are having a great start to the season with their offense stepping up and scoring 3.50 goals per game. Matthew Tkachuk, Colin White, and Sam Bennett have scored five goals and nine assists to lead the top two lines, but the rest of the offense has also stepped up. Alexander Barkov, Ida Lewis Sterinen, and Carter Verhig have combined for three goals and six assists, while defensemen Gustav Forseling and Radko Gudas have added one goal and five assists from the point to open up the offense. This is going to be a great game between two of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. The Panthers are looking to win on their home ice, but the Lightning are looking to bounce back from a 1-3 start and control this game from the opening puck drop. The Lightning should find the back of the net at will with Steven Stamkos, Nikita Kucherov, and the rest of the forward unit stepping up and controlling the puck in the offensive zone, while creating open shots with great passes near the net. The Lightning should also limit the Panthers' offense with Viktor Hedman, Mikhail Sergachev, and the rest of the defense, stepping up and creating turnovers in the defensive zone and limiting shots on the net, while Andre Vasilevsky who has a .912 save percentage and a 2.73 goals against average thus far this season, blanks the Panthers' shots on the net. The Lightning should win the game with a strong game on the road. Take the Lightning for the win. The offense was efficient for the Lightning last season. Tampa Bay finished last year ranking 7th in goals per game and 17th in shots per game. Steven Stamkos led the team with 106 points last season. He finished the season top 5 in points. Stamkos has 6 goals in the first 4 games. Four other players on the Lightning have scored one goal this season. The rest of the team will need to step up and help Stamkos, who has six of Tampa Bay's ten total goals this season. Florida was terrific on offense last season. They ranked first in goals per game and first in shots per game. Jonathan Huberdeau led the team with 115 points. He was tied for second in the league in points and first in assists last season. Huberdeau is no longer with the Panthers after signing with the Flames. Despite losing Huberdeau, the Panthers haven't skipped a beat on offense this season. They scored three goals or more in each of their first four games. Matthew Tkachuk leads the team with six points in four games. He has one point or more in each game this season. Four players on the Panthers each have four points on the year. The Lightning has really struggled on offense to begin the season. They scored two goals or less in three out of their first four games of the season. Stamkos has six out of the Lightning's total of ten goals this year. Tampa Bay and Florida have each allowed three goals or less in three out of their first four games this season. The Lightning averaged 3.30 goals per game, and the Panthers averaged 2.60 goals per game over the last 10 meetings between these two teams. The under is 8-2 in the last 10 meetings between these two teams. With Tampa Bay struggling on offense, the under will hit in this contest. Our total pick is under 6.5 runs. Detroit Red Wings vs Chicago Blackhawks. The Red Wings are off to a strong start and hope the offense can continue to play well, scoring 12 goals in their first three games. David Perrin and Dylan Larkin have scored four goals and four assists to lead the top line, but the entire offense has stepped up to start the season. Oscar Sundqvist, Dominic Kubelik and Michael Rasmussen have combined for three goals and seven assists, while defensemen Ali Mata and Ben Chero have added two goals and four assists from the blue line to overwhelm the opposing defenses. The Blackhawks have shown promise to start the season but hope the offense can improve, scoring only seven goals in their first three games. While Sam Lafferty, Jonathan Toews, and Tyler Johnson have scored four goals and four assists, the rest of the offense has struggled. The hope is that Patrick Kane can step up as he plays a pivotal role on the top line but has only scored one assist to start the season. The offense has looked great but the defense has carried the Red Wings, allowing only 2.33 goals per game. 
Philip Ronak and Ali Mata have led the top pairing, but the entire unit has looked great with Moritz Cedar, Ben Chero, and the rest of the defense, creating turnovers in the defensive zone and turning defense into instant defense. Moreover, goaltender Vil Huso has been great to start the season with a .923 save percentage and a 2.50 goals against average on 65 shots. The Blackhawks are looking to win on their home ice, but I like how the Red Wings have looked to start the season and see them overwhelming them from the opening puck drop. The Red Wings, who have scored 12 goals through three games, should pile on the goals with David Perrin, Dylan Larkin, and the rest of the forward unit carrying the puck into the offensive zone and finding open shots with quick passes. The Red Wings should also limit the Blackhawks' offense, which has only scored seven goals in the last three games, with Philip Ronek, Ali Mata, and the rest of the defense creating turnovers in the defensive zone and limiting shots on the net, allowing Vil Huso to make plenty of easy saves in the net. The Red Wings should win the game with a strong performance on the road. Take the Red Wings for the win. The Red Wings were poor on offense last year. They ranked 25th in goals per game and 25th in shots per game. Dylan Larkin led the Wings with 69 points. Lucas Raymond was third in points, tied for second in goals, and fourth in assists among all rookies in the league last year. He has two assists on the season. David Perrin leads the team with three goals. Four players each led the team with four points for the Red Wings. Detroit has scored three goals or more in each of their first three games of the season. The offense was poor for Chicago last season. The Blackhawks ranked 29th in goals per game and 31st in shots per game. Patrick Kane led the team with 92 points. Chicago lost a key contributor on offense in Alex Debrinket. He scored 41 goals for the team last season. Sam Lafferty, Tyler Johnson, and Jeff Dickinson each led the team with three points. Kane has just one assist through three games. Detroit has been clicking on offense to begin the year. They scored three goals or more in each of their first three games of the season. David Perrin leads the team with three goals. Four players for Detroit lead the team with four points through three games. Petem Razak has a 3.50 GAA and .885 SV% this season for Chicago. Detroit will take advantage and score a bunch of goals in a good matchup. The over has hit in four out of the last six meetings between these two teams. This will be a higher scoring game and the over will hit. Our total pick is over six goals. Seattle Kraken vs Colorado Avalanche. The Seattle Kraken extended their losing streak to three games following Wednesday's 4-3 overtime defeat to the St. Louis Blues. Playing as plus 135 home dogs, the Kraken yielded three first-period goals and rallied from a two-goal deficit to force overtime, but Justin Fox scored his second goal on the night to lift St. Louis over Seattle. The Kraken outshot the Blues 35-28. They killed all three power play opportunities but failed to convert their lone man advantage. Through their first five outings in 2022-23, the Kraken have scored six power play goals on 19 attempts, but they've also allowed seven power play goals on 20 attempts. After an easy 5-2 victory to the Chicago Blackhawks in their season opener, the Colorado Avalanche hit the road and lost at the Calgary Flames 5-3 on the second night of a back-to-back -back set. Last Monday, the reigning champs beat the Minnesota Wild 6-3 as minus 125 road favorites, but two days later, they lost to the Winnipeg Jets 4-3 as huge minus 235 home favorites. Winnipeg had a 2-0 lead at the end of the first period and a 3-1 lead midway through the second, but the Avs find a way to tie the game thanks to Mikko Rantanen's second goal of the night and Valeri Nachushkin's fifth goal of the season. Colorado outshot Winnipeg 33-28, but Alexander Georgiev yielded the fourth goal just 31 seconds into overtime. The Avs' defense hasn't impressed at all so far this season, but the Kraken have been pretty much awful and desperately need more from their blue line and goaltending duo. I'm looking for Colorado's offense to make the difference, so give me the Avs to beat the puck line. Mikko Rantanen has recorded three goals and six assists over the previous four games. Valeri Nachushkin and Nathan McKinnon have accounted for eight points apiece, while Arturi Lekkonen has a couple of goals and dishes on his season tally. The Avs' top two lines are loaded with talent, so I'm expecting a lot of goals in Seattle's net. Our team pick is. The Colorado Avalanche minus 1.5 goals. In their last game the Kraken were at home and lost to the St. Louis Blues in overtime, going down 3-1 after the first period, scoring two goals to tie the game in the second period and being blanked in the third period. Will Borgen, Ryan Donato, and Adam Larson all lit the lamp in the loss, and Oliver Bjorkstrand and Alex Wenberg each had two assists. Martin Jones, 1113.70 GAA, gave up four goals on 28 shots. Philip Grubauer, 0 to 114.27 GAA, may get the call for this game, and he is still looking for his first win. While Seattle finished at the bottom of the Pacific Division last season, they did beat the Avs at home late in the season. 
the Avs were at home in their last game, losing to the Winnipeg Jets 4-3 in OT, where they scored two late goals to force the extra period, only to lose 31 seconds into overtime. In the loss Mikko Rantanen scored two goals, Valeri Nachushkin had a goal, and Colorado outshot Winnipeg 33-28. Last season in the one game between these teams in Colorado there were 10 goals scored. I think this game will be like that one, which is why I am heavily leaning on the over. The Avs will get a bunch of goals in this game, as they are averaging 4.25 goals per game, and will be facing a Seattle team that is giving up an average of 4 goals per game. While the Avs have a great attack their D has not looked good on the season, giving up an average of 3.5 goals per game, and Seattle will take advantage of that and light the lamp multiple times. This game will be far from a defensive affair, which is why the over 6.5 goals.